Welcome to the NIPS 2016 Symposium on the deepest of all learners, the recurrent neural networks and other machines that learn algorithms. There are still people coming in, but we start the show. Three winners of the IEEE Neural Network Pioneers Award were sentenced to death because their work was deemed to increase unemployment in certain areas. One of them was a French guy called Lecun. One of them was a British guy called Hinton. One of them was a German guy called Schmittur. What is your last wish? They asked the French guy. Lecun says, a bottle of exquisite uh, La Tosha Fite. What is your last wish? They ask the German guy. He says, I want to give a speech about the history of deep learning. <laughs> what is your last wish? They ask the British guy. Hinton says, I want to get shot before Schmidhuber starts his speech. <laughs> Unfortunately for you guys, it's too late now because I'm, <laughs> I'm already in the middle of my little speech about the deepest learners. Um, we are competing with the Deep Learning Symposium where they surely are celebrating this guy who 50 years ago invented deep learning. He had the first deep multilayer perceptrons, a mathematician from the Ukraine, Ivaknenko, Alexei Grigorovich Ivaknenko. His, his networks were not only three or four layers deep, no, five, six, eight layers, and they learned. How many people in this room knew that this is the father of deep learning? Mm -hmm. How many people did not know that he is the father of deep learning? Mm -hmm. I see we have a third group in this room <laughs> who didn't understand the question. In the same decade, between 1960 and 1970, also a central algorithm of our field was invented. Um, the first publication on backpropagation dates back to 1960 by Kelly in the context of control theory. And he had continuous backpropagation, basically. And the modern version of backpropagation was published in 1970 by a Finnish master student, Seppolina Inma, automatic automatic differentiation in deep uh, networks, graphs of computational nodes, each of them computing a differentiable function of the incoming signals from the sensors, but then broadcasting these signals, the functions of these signals to the other nodes it's connected to. And then finally, at the output layer, there's a difference between what the network should have computed and what it really computed, and this error you want to um, figure out how much does it depend on all the parameters of the system. And he uh, then uh, saw that you can propagate these error signals backwards and you can recursively compute the gradients backwards in these graphs. And that is what backpropagation is, uh, is about. He phrased it as a very general method and the first guy who really applied that technique to a neural network is here with us tonight. Um, that is Paul Verbas and he will be the first speaker after this little introduction. He also did very important work on recurrent neural networks and also Ron Williams and several other people in the 80s. The recurrent networks are truly the most powerful uh, neural networks because they are general purpose computers and that's why they can basically implement any depth as long as it is computable. How do you see that a recurrent neural network is a general purpose computer? Well, you can take little sub-networks and you can wire them up as NAND gates. And then you know from uh, computer science that the CPU on your laptop can be implemented, can be constructed through a bunch of NAND gates that you connect. That's the simplest uh, way of seeing that this recurrent network thing can compute any program that your laptop can compute. And the program, of course, is the 
weight matrix, the connections, the strengths of these connections, the weights, they change through learning, and you see incoming data streams like video or speech, and then in there some thinking goes on while the recurrent networks the connections, the recurrent connections are used to store previous events until then at some point later you compute output actions. For example, you are steering a car in response to video that is coming in through the actions of the car. So learning programs in these general purpose computers is about learning weight matrices. And um, in the 80s it became clear that it doesn't really work well in deep uh, recurrent neural networks or in deep networks because this gradient um, propagation procedure for supervised learning, it, um, it apparently didn't lead to good results when there were long time lags between the relevant events. And uh, the first, um, my first idea about how to overcome that was this unsupervised hierarchy of recurrent neural networks where each of them was trying to, um, to come up with a more compressed representation of the incoming data streams through unsupervised learning, through predictive coding. And then each um, element of the hierarchy gave a compressed representation of the sequence to the next higher level. And then finally, uh, the hope was that in the top layer, you can classify easily using standard supervised learning techniques based on this compact uh, representation obtained through unsupervised learning. And uh, that worked very well. Um, we, we, for the first time, then were able to bridge the thousand computational um, steps, uh, step delays of a thousand steps between relevant input events. But um, uh, the reason why the traditional recurrent networks didn't uh, work well was identified by this man, by Seth Hochreiter, my very first uh, student ever in my first deep learning project ever. And I'm so happy that he is um, co-organizer now of this a symposium, and he figured out that as you are propagating these errors backwards from layer to layer, uh, they get smaller and smaller in the standard uh, architectures in an exponentially shrinking way or exponentially exploding way, which means that you couldn't learn well. And out of that insight came the LSTM, the long short term memory. Has anybody heard of long short term memory? Okay, okay excellent. Good. No second group here. I'm, I love that. Long short-term memory is just a recurrent network that is designed to overcome this problem through a very um, simple trick. Um, we don't have time uh, to go into the details, but um, back then, uh, few people were interested in that. In fact, um, in fact, we are celebrating uh, this year a 20-year anniversary because 20 years ago, the first submission on LSTM to the NIPS conference uh, got um, rejected. But today, it's on your smartphone whenever you do OK Google and you speak uh, to Google and um, then you are essentially speaking to an LSTM trained by um, connectionist temporal classification, a method which was created by Alex Graves in 2006, as first author on the ICML paper there. And here are a couple of other important names, uh, Sepp Hochheit, the first student, then Felix Geers, the second LSTM student who invented these gates for the recurrent units, which are really useful for many um, applications. And, um, and um, we have greatly profited from the fact that every five years, computers are getting 10 times faster. And this trend has held since 1941, when this man built the first program controlled computer. Now we've got a fact of 10 to the 15, and soon we will be in the realm of um, human brains if this uh, trend doesn't break. Not yet there. Um, all the major companies are now using LSTM like crazy. Um, not only uh, Google, but also Microsoft and um, IBM and Apple is using it for its uh, iOS chatbots, allo, and we have some uh, great speakers today uh, from that, uh, who are associated with these con uh, companies. There will be Ilya Sutskeva, who did very important work in machine translation, for example, from one language to another using LSTM networks. Oriol Vignols, also his friend and colleague, uh, who did um, um, many things, including image caption generation from nothing, where a CNN feeds into an LSTM, which learns just from training data to produce um, 
uh, captions. And Lee Deng will be here from Microsoft, who did very important work on uh, speech recognition. So we have a great lineup of speakers today. Um, we are also going to speak about mm, non-traditional types of differentiable computers, like this one from 1992. That's when Mike Moser and um, uh, Serupa Das, uh, that was the first author, and Lee Giles had these differentiable stack machines, a neural network which controlled push and pop operations, differentiable operations of a differentiable stack. So uh, a separation between storage and control of the storage. And um, we see a lot of interest in this field today for example, here at this conference, we will have um, great talks or um, uh, great speakers uh, who have extended that um, line of work. There's Alex Graves, uh, now at DeepMind, who will talk about the dynamic neural, uh, the differentiable neural computer, which uses other types of internal or external storage. And then there will be Jason Weston, who will talk about memory networks. So there are these combinations of non-traditional storage and, um, and neural networks which have been really successful in recent applications. Another way of, um, of controlling, of separating um, control and storage is fast weights, which goes back to von der Malsburg. Von der Malsburg in 1981 had this famous report about very quickly changing weights, dynamic links as he called them, fast weights as we often call them today. And, um, and then my, my little contribution was to make all of that end-to-end -end differentiable and then you get another uh, general purpose computer which can doesn't have to have even recurrent connections. It can use just these fast weights to quickly uh, store events that happened until it, uh, these are needed to compute output actions. And um, a recent paper by uh, Barr and Hinton at this conference uh, also is uh, focusing on this, um, this trick and um, is very similar to something that we had at ICANN 1993, but also has a few extra things and um, has interesting applications. Uh, check it out at this conference. We also saw that fast weights can be used not only for supervised learning, but for reinforcement learning. And Faustino Gomez was the first author who used reinforcement learning, um, evolution-based reinforcement learning for um, for uh, fast weight systems and was able to um, solve complex uh, control problems with that thing in 2005. Um, deep reinforcement learning with deep partially observable uh, environments. And, uh, and then it turns out that you can use this fast weight concept to implement networks that run their own learning algorithm on the network itself, their own weight change algorithm on the network itself. And in 1993, that was just a theoretical pos uh, possibility. But then 19, in 2001, Sepp Hochreiter here at this conference, he um, showed that you really, in practical applications, can learn a learning algorithm. He had an LSTM, a meta-LSTM, which learned a learning algorithm running on a network which didn't change its weights anymore and which was trained by backpropagation, by gradient descent, to learn a learning algorithm that was 30 times faster than backprop, at least on a certain um, domain, the domain of quadratic functions, 2001. We see more and more RNN concepts invading FNN space, feedforward network space. I've got only five minutes left, so I have to speak much faster. Rupesh uh, Srivastava, one of the core organizers, was the first author on these highway networks, the first networks that had hundreds of layers and still worked. And based on this LSTM trick, which is basically at each um, layer, you have a copy of the content of the previous layer plus a nonlinear function of that. And the same is true for the ResNets. The main different, uh, difference between the ResNets of Microsoft and the highway networks is that the f of x, uh, this nonlinear function, is different, and the highway networks have a gate in there. And this was then used by Microsoft to win last year the uh, ImageNet competition, and they greatly improved the, the state of the art there. Um, we also have different types of um, recurrent networks invading the classical feedforward space, for example, for segmentation, you can use multidimensional uh, recurrent networks, especially multidimensional LSTM, to better segment um, images, in this case, uh, case brain scans, uh, than traditional uh, methods like CNNs. And we will have a talk by Nal Kalkbrenner, who is from DeepMind, who has also worked on that. Um, we can train robots to tie knots, for example, that is from 2006. 
what we really want to do is reinforcement learning, where there's no teacher, like in this um, image from July 2013, where raw vision came into a recurrent network and it learned just through maximizing reward uh, to drive a car. And uh, maybe Andristo Mikulainen, one of our speakers, has done pioneering work on this evolution of programs for recurrent networks, uh, black box optimization, which often works much better than traditional reinforcement learning in the real world, because we don't care there for Markovian conditions and stuff like that. So Risto is going to talk about uh, things like that. You have maybe seen at the Audi demonstration that this uh, stuff is now invading the real world, and um, maybe you have seen this demo of a self-parking car which has reinforcement learned to park itself. Um, that's a collaboration between Audi and our company Nason. What we really want to do is we want to uh, build a combination of these two things, two recurrent networks. One is the recurrent controller, which takes in the data stream and translates it into actions based on the history of the incoming data. Then you want to have a separate, unsupervised recurrent network, which learns to become a predictive coder of the data and which understands all the regularities that were ever observed in all in the entire history of actions and sequences until the uh, end of your life. And you want the controller to exploit the uh, model in, um, in a way that allows it to more quickly achieve goals and to plan ahead, for example. And the first papers on that we, we had also 25 years ago, but now we know much better how to do that, right? So we will see uh, stuff along these lines. Finally, something that is unusual for this conference, namely, we are going to talk about mathematically optimal uh, general problem-solving methods program searches that are in many ways much more powerful than the uh, gradient-based recurrent network methods that we have uh, seen so far, although they are not as practical. But from a theoretical perspective, at least, they are universal. And um, Markus Hutter did uh, pioneering work in, in this field, an optimal way of solving all well-defined problems in an asymptotically optimal fashion, which is relevant for really large problems, but almost all problems are large and there are just a few small ones. So this is a universal method and every computer scientist should know it. We are going to see lots of interesting um, uh, presentations. We have a great line of, uh, lineup of speakers and um, our first guy to speak will be the first guy who ever applied backpropagation to neural networks. Paul Werbers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.